This is the Addictive Substance Detoxification Program. Uh, I'm Mark Squibb, Chairman of the Whole Health Network. Addictive chemistry is very specific and in a simple terms addiction is a survival response to being exposed to a toxin. Now I realize that's kind of a curious perspective to say addiction is part of survival but as we go through the discussion I think you'll understand what we're saying. Um, effectively, whenever the body is exposed to a toxin, the body manufactures an antitoxin to resist the effects of the toxin, and the body keeps those antitoxins. And this, in a nutshell, is how addiction happens. Now, generally speaking, addictive substances are those that influence metabolism at both a physical and mental point uh, perspective, and they will effectively accumulate. So the more toxin over a longer period of time creates a built-in resistance to the toxin and when that resistance becomes imbalanced is when we experience the particularly adverse craving responses and seeking responses that are uh, sociologically disruptive. Okay so here's our picture. What we've got is a young lady that has a couple of overlays. The outside item is a, I'll call it an addictive substance, but the inverse which is built into her opposes and as long as these outside and inside influences balance each other then um, there's a minimum of discomfort. What happens is through successive exposure to the addictive substance the inside or resistant component grows so that when it becomes um, imbalanced uh, then you've got a craving or a need to fulfill or restore balance by seeking more of the outside substance. So addictive substances cause the body to make anti-substances and anti-substances oppose the substance in an attempt to create a stabilization anticip in anticipation of future exposure to the substance. And the anti-substances accumulate and, break, and under normal conditions break down slowly over time. And just bottom line they tend to be the metabolic opposites of the actual substance. So if the substance that produces the addiction tends to produce euphoria, then the anti-substance will be a metabolic inverse of euphoria or discomfort, which describes the majority of addictive substances and why withdrawal or addiction resolution is such an unpleasant and long-term experience for most individuals. Okay, so what we're saying here is addiction is a balance phenomenon or specifically an imbalance. When the addictive substance and the anti-substance which is built into the body go out of balance then you end up with um, a characteristic or a behavior or discomfort pattern that influences behavior. Now the th important thing about toxic substances is our bodies are really quite good at getting rid of them. Our livers and so forth are able to discard toxic, toxic substances in a period of hours, you know, typically less than 12. And when the body clears these substances, the residual or the appearance or manifestation of the internal anti-substances acting alone creates an imbalance so that the body is in discomfort or stress, distress as a result of the antitoxins acting alone. So what we're targeting in terms of our um, addiction kits is the elimination of the anti-substances and accelerating these eliminations. So what happens in an addiction phenomenon is the person craves the actual substance to balance the accumulated anti-substances that gets built into the body and this is what drives the pathological or sociological sociopathic behavior to quest the substance because the body feels simply that not having that substance is a metabolic crisis and it becomes a life or death situation. So um, what we're doing here is we're trying we built models which effectively enable the simultaneous elimination of the actual substance and the internal substance. So that's where our addiction kits go. Okay so the trick to eliminating addiction is to clear the anti substance which restores stability and the key molecules that are usually missing from insufficient quantity from our diets are sulfur, selenium and chloride 
and that the inability to rapidly break down the internal substances drives the cravings and substance quest. So, like I said before, what we're trying to do is to get rid of the internal and external components of the addiction at the same time. External is actually easier because it just involves cessation of the consumption of the substance, but providing the chemistry and the process to break down the physical components is the physical or chemical component of our addiction kits. So now there's another part of the addiction process which is the energetic or psychological okay because the act of consuming most substances like lighting a cigarette involves doing something with the hands which is energetically centered. Um, so the physical and the mental components of the addiction are often related or interdependent and for many people inseparable. So that's it forced us or enticed us or motivated us to build a model that deals with both the physical side and the energetic side of the addiction at the same time. This is a tool by a very brilliant fellow named Roger Callahan who developed a technique for resolving the energetic side of the addiction process literally within minutes. It works most of the time it makes the difference between success and failure. It's fast, it's discreet, it's permanent, and most of all, it's free. All right, so we include a copy of Tapping the Healer Within inside each one of our addiction kits, and we cannot overemphasize how important it is to include the addiction treatment algorithms in, along with the physiological addiction. Okay, so we're going to go ahead in another video and go through the how do you how to kind of a view of the kit. But please pay attention. I believe the page 91 uh, for the um, addiction resolution is is critical. Okay, so as we go through the clearing process, there are multiple phases that happen. We describe the first phase of resolving addiction as a primary clearing. During this phase, phase, which usually takes from one to five days, the body is breaking down the internal anti-substances that cause the addiction and withdrawal response. Now this breakdown often causes a decrease in dependence, but it's also accompanied by a tendency for significant detoxification. Now detoxification may include diarrhea and sweating, where the adverse chemi chemistry that's been become part of the body has to be discarded. So um, this is a key issue. The second phase of the addiction is what we call vulnerab vulnerability. And the issue about vulnerability is once you've been through the primary clearing, your body still knows how to make the substances that created the addiction in the first place. So if you happen to go back to your substance, you know, it is possible to become rapidly re-addicted because the body will turn around and manufacture, remanufacture the components that you got rid of during the primary clearing very quickly because it knows how. So uh, the good news is that if you do happen to uh, fall victim to a vulnerability because of life or other stress, uh, the primary clearing will work again. Uh, as as often as needed, but we obviously don't recommend that you go back and back to your addicted substance. But if you do fall off the wagon, it's uh, quite easy to get back on. Okay, and long term, you know, the uh, there's a tendency for vulnerability to um, addictions because of some genetic factors that we'll speak to just a minute as part of a survival response. But generally speaking, your vulnerability will tend to fall off over a period of significant time, perhaps years after you've resolved the addiction and stayed off the substance. We're not saying that we recommend you could go back. I just believe that you know, as the body breaks down the primary substance and takes a break from manufacturing the anti-substances, it's reasonable to expect that over a period of several years, um, the vulnerability or primary vulnerability will tend to resolve as well. So uh, punchline here is genetics matter and we're going to go into that discussion in the next slide. Okay, addictions are reflective vulnerability and the surprise to most people is that the ability to become addicted in historically is a survival advantage and that speaks to our body's adaptability 
to survive and thrive in toxic environments. And we'll go through the details here. Which, you know, your ability to develop or create resistive chemistry or chemistry within your body that opposes or resists exposure to a toxic substance is an adaptive response. What it enables us to do is to live in more toxic environments and thrive by not allowing or enabling those toxins to adversely influence our metabolism. So as long as we live in a toxic and the antitoxin and toxins remain balanced, then we're good to go. However, you know, the, this combination of a survival advantage is also paired with a Western diet that limits availability of the magic molecules that enable us to break down the addictions or the toxin resistance infrastructure. So, you know, these are absolutely nutrient cofactors. We've spoken to what they are, but the bottom line is that these nutrient cofactors tend to be deficient in the modern diet, and the addiction resolution kit is effectively these nutrient cofactors that enable us to very rapidly break down these anti-substances.